Are you a professional woman who wants to create passive income streams and financial freedom through real estate investing? Join us here on Real Estate Investor Goddesses, hosted by Monique Holm. Listen to women who are rocking it in real estate investments as they share their stories of success, failures, and best advice in real estate investing. Start creating real wealth through real estate. Tune in today. Here's your host, real estate investor, syndicator, and developer, Monique Holm. Everyone, welcome to the Real Estate Investor Goddesses podcast. I'm your host, Monique Hom. On this show, I interview amazing, badass real estate investing goddesses, women that are crushing it in the real estate investing space, women who are super inspiring. And I am really, really excited to have today with us Sadna Sabarwa, who is known as the No Money Down Queen. What I'm really excited about for in particular with with Sadna is that because she's been the no money down queen she and ha and when we hear her story you're going to get more insights about this but a lot of a lot of people especially women don't get in the game because they think I don't have the money I can't do this and um so Sadna is proof positive that you can do it you don't have to have um tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars in the bank to get into real estate. So in over the past decade of investing, she has bought and sold over 30 different properties, including single family homes, duplexes, fourplex, a fiveplex, a sixplex, an eight unit building. Um, she's built her portfolio of properties with none or little of her own money. And she loves to invest through recycled money yay um and create and using creative financing strategies including traditional bank financing lines of credit financing from private lenders borrowing from family credit cards joint ventures with partners all sorts of things so she created her no money down academy online course on real estate investing to show others all they need to know to go from beginner to professional real estate investor i'm super excited to have her with us welcome sadna Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. I didn't know this was going to be alive, but hey, <laughs> kind of challenge and then we keep on tracking, right? So yes, Absolutely. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. Thanks for coming and joining us. So how did you get started in real estate investing? Oh God, it's a long story, but no, actually I'll, I'll give you the crux of it. And that was basically uh, when I became a single parent, my ex did not support me financially, and I had to figure out ways to bring extra income into the household. And I work as a law clerk full time. So one of the clients came into the office and, and she was renewing a mortgage and her mortgage payment was lower than my car payment at the time. Wow. And when she explained to me the concept of positive cash flow, it was like light bulbs went off. And since then, I just started learning and learning and learning. And then, you know, you just kind of do with what you have. And for me, I didn't have much. Because as I said, as a single income with having to support three kids going through school and stuff, I needed to figure out how am I going to do this? And that's what I did. So I learned how do I invest with no money, which I didn't have of my own or very little of money little money of my own. So all of that is basically, when I say no money, it's like I didn't put any money in, or if I did put, how do I get it out as soon as possible? So for me, that is no money down investing. That's amazing. So what was your first deal? One of the first deals I'll say is I did a tax sale. I did a six flex with a VTB, when to take back mortgage. I did a duplex because it was all in such a short span of time, because once the clock got ticking, like, you know, once your brain starts to work, then you say, OK, so my one of my first deals was a JV partner deal. And I bought a duplex with a lady who brought in the down payment and who brought in the more like he, she qualified for the mortgage. And we were able to um, get the property and we split everything 50 50. So, OK didn't have to come up with anything I just had to be the deal finder in that scenario that's one okay. of the first ones I did and I, I love that as I said I say one of the first ones because it just started going and going and going if I was to say which was the first deal I'd really have to go back and check which one is the first one I bought 
<laughs> That's awesome. How quickly were did you did you do it in that first year? How how many did within you do? the first four years? I got to my highest number that I held. The properties were at eighteen properties, which was forty six units. And then by that time, the kids were getting into university. And now today, I still own about seven or eight. But then I started to sell them off as the kids were going through schools and stuff. So which one made sense? Like which one needed to be sold? So let's say, okay, sell that one or this one. So it's it's pretty much been a process of where can I get my money out most to do what I need to do to support my children. Amazing. So what's your focus right now? Right now, I am working on a flip, which is an assignment and a flip together. I bought a condo about three months ago during COVID time. So yes, guys, it is possible to buy even during this time. And so I'm working on a flip right now. And also, I'm working on a development project. Amazing. I love that. And um, so I want to ask you about your biggest mistakes. And I, I ask all of my guests this, and I love this question because I find that we learn so much more when things don't go well than when they do. So what was your biggest mistake and what did you learn from it? I'd have to say, I wish at the beginning when I started, I wish I had more money so I could have hired amazing mentors right off the beginning because then I know my growth would have been much stronger. And I think also knowing that somebody has your back, like knowing that you have your mentor who's going to guide you or to avoid pitfalls, I think I would have gotten farther in the amount of time that I've done because I wasn't really thinking. My goal was only to put my kids through school or to put them through university. And that's all I was thinking. I wasn't thinking a bigger picture. I wasn't thinking, oh my God, let's get to 200 units or let's get to 500 units. That wasn't the goal. And even like for me, having created the No Money Down Academy, I never thought that I would be teaching this stuff because really my life is fine. It was fine and it's still fine because all I was thinking is that, okay, my kids, in order for me to put my kids through university, I need this much money and therefore I need to create this much income. So I was through real estate, I've been able to do that. Now, had I thought about, oh, my God, let me get to be a billionaire. Maybe I would have chosen different mentors or maybe I would have gotten more mentorship. So that's one thing I do say that I wish I had gotten different and not different mentors right at the beginning. So that you say that I have spent a lot of money on my education, but now it's in a different direction. It's now more towards teaching and doing a lot less. Like I'm not going for quantity anymore. I'm going for quality. So your biggest mistake was not having a mentor up front, not, not thinking bigger. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good, really good. And uh, what are you most proud of? My three babies. Two of them are in medicine and one of them has done his MBA from Northwestern, which I'm not sure if you know. I mean, it's one of the top five management schools in, right? So my youngest one has done his MBA from there. And um, my oldest one is already a doctor. He's graduated and staff. And my middle one is at um, Dal U, which is in Halifax, Nova Scotia. So I'm proud of the, what they have become through me becoming what I have become. That's beautiful. Not to and- take away the credit from them because obviously they have to work hard. And, you know, it's so funny. I had my training yesterday and somebody asked me, like, what's my degree or diploma? Like, what have I done? And I'm like, I've never gone to university. And all my life I've lived and struggled with this thing that because I didn't go to university, I'm not smart. So that is one of the limiting beliefs I had put upon myself. Like, And this is why I'm saying, if I had done more at the beginning, even with getting mentors and stuff, that belief would have been out the window instead of that belief coming out now saying, hey, I can do this. Yes, even though I did this on my own for a certain purpose, now it's time to give back on a bigger scale. Like I said, thinking bigger, right? Yeah. So it's a huge shift. It is. That's, that is a really big shift. And it's good that you recognize it now, though. Yes. And I, yes. And I also love, and this is a good 
it's very inspiring for others who are going, well, I don't, I've never been to university. I can't do this. Well, you don't have to have a college degree to do this. Um, and it's, you, you can go through. So I love, I love that sadhana. Yes. Um, so to what do you attribute your success? I think my why. I think because my reason for succeeding was my children, I think anytime you think about giving up or, you know, obviously not every deal works out to its perfect uh, way. I think my kids that became my why was like, I need to do this because I want to make sure my kids don't come out with huge debt on the other side once they graduate. And I mean, we all know how much money it costs to even just do one degree to go to university, right? I have a coworker, she did a law, um, law clerk program. And I think she's been graduated for like six years, seven years, and she's still paying for those student debts. And it breaks my heart because, I mean, that was my thing because I know how much it costs for a child to go through the education system, right? And so therefore when I had three of those going through that process. I'm like, I need to do this for my kids. And I think that's when you realize no matter what else happens, keep your eye on the prize. And for me, my prize was my three children going through university and uh, being able to succeed at what they do. That's incredible. And what a gift you gave them to be able to, for them to go to school debt-free um, and, uh, and now they mm -hmm. can share share their gifts with the world and not have to worry about having you know a mortgage or two on their backs you know well they can do their own mortgages i'm only worried <laughs> well, about like the value of a mortgage stuff. right yeah. like you know yeah. the, uh, this degree which you might as well have bought a property or two yes um, i mean you know there are certain properties i regret selling because i had to come up with the money for tuition and stuff but you know what it's okay because everything comes to teach you something Everything yeah. is a process. And you know what? Even though I sold those properties and yes, they could have been worth a lot more. I always feel God has a better plan. It was meant to be. It taught me what it needed to teach me. And you move on. And, you know, it's the same question I get asked many times about my ex-husband as well. And I remember, and I say this many times, one of the advice that I got after my divorce was that don't make your life miserable trying to make his life miserable. And I nice. followed that to a T because I, to this day, have never wished any ill will on him. My journey with him was for a certain amount of time. I got three beautiful kids out of it. He left me with a home, a roof over my head. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that. And I thank you and thank him for that. Apart from that, everything else is a story. Yeah. Everything else is a story. I tell myself or anybody else. So therefore, why even bother going down that path? So good. That's so good. Yeah. It's like you can make yourself miserable and just focus on, oh, he should have done and that should have. But if he had done that, you would not have created this amazing thing that you've done and you would not be helping now other people. And so it was a gift. Yes. Uh, you know, everything uh, is a gift. We yeah. just have to look at it that way. Yeah. You have to search for it. So I call it that some gifts are come in very ugly packaging. <laughs> so, one but, of my coaches actually says it's a gift wrapped in sandpaper yeah yeah so, so it hurts from the outside but then you know there's a beautiful package inside and that's where the personal development the growth and all of that comes in if we just keep on looking at you know you could choose to focus on the betrayal you could choose to focus on oh he left me for somebody else oh i don't feel self-worth all of that stuff you could choose to but then at the same time you could start focusing on okay his part in my life was done and i'm grateful for that part now let's see what is what am i left with and we start yeah. from there beautiful so what advice do you have for a woman who's just starting out in real estate investing get the knowledge and don't you don't need to learn everything before you start because by the time you learn everything something else will change so that's where you will get stuck in paralysis analysis so uh, one of the slides i have on my presentation is imperfect action is better than no action 
Absolutely. So if you learn, great. If you make a mistake, you will learn from that mistake. But go and do something. Go out and do something towards your goals. Take even one baby step every single day towards that. I love it. And what do you wish you'd known at the beginning that you now know? Like I said, thinking bigger. I, I just, I, I wish I was going to use something. Like, I wish I had more courage. And I think now that my kids, when, my oldest one is quite interested in real estate investing. And I think that will give me a little bit more support to say, okay, let's do it. Let's do this. Because just, I think just having somebody else wanting to do it together with you, it makes yeah. a huge difference. It's almost like a, somebody who's there to support you. It's not necessarily that he knows everything or knows anything, but he's still going to look up to me, but it's like, oh, let's do it together kind of thing. Right. So I, I miss that. And I think having my son now on board, it's a little bit more for me. It's like, oh, okay, let's do this. I love it. And this is where the development project also comes in. I want him to be a part of it. And I think he's getting interested. So I know for me, as I teach him also, I'm also teaching my students as well. And this is one of the things I say. I mean, I don't know anything about development. But the JV partner that I picked for that is has his own construction company. So I know he does, and I will learn. So same thing with women out there. If you don't know something, partner up with somebody who does, and you will learn in the process. So don't have to be like, oh my God, I don't know this. What do I do? I'm tongue tied and I'm feet tied and I'm toe tied. No, (laughs) you have every resource that's available to you. When I started, I didn't have anything. I didn't have, um, like I said, I didn't have the money to get a mentor. I didn't have a whole lot of things. The only thing I had was my drive, my will to succeed. And that was it. And then when you ask yourself the questions about how do I do something, your mind is going to give you answers to that question. But if you say something like, you know, oh, why can't I ever, why can't I ever get success at this? Your mind's going to give you the answers to that question. Yeah. So it's the answer is in the questions you're asking yourself, because those are the answers you're going to get. So good. Yeah. So I would say it's asking yourself the right questions is the, that's the path. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the, I think you you might have answered that there. It's for one of our our viewers here is asked if your kids are succeeding in real estate too, and said now one of them. Oh, my <laughs> youngest one just bought a house in Seattle because that's where he lives, and my oldest one, as I said, he is helping me now in my project that I'm doing for the first time, which is a development project. I love it. That's so great. Um, Okay, so before we get to our famed end of show Trinity, which is a brag, a gratitude and a desire, how can people connect with you, find out more about what you do? Okay, well, as you said, I have uh, built a course, an online course. It's called the no money down academy.com. If you can't remember my name, just do single mom millionaire.com. You can reach <laughs> me through there. I do host free trainings every so often. I've, we're trying to figure out a schedule. So every like two to three to four times a month kind of thing. So you could register for those trainings even through uh, no money down academy.com or just through Facebook and LinkedIn. All right. Beautiful. Okay. Now it's time for our Trinity. What are you celebrating right now? What's one brag? I think me starting on my first development project. I just, I just am so excited about it because I've done buy and hold. I've done flips. I've done renovations. Even though it's good to have learned from all of that, I I think I'm really excited about the development project. So good. So well bragged. And what's one thing you are grateful for? My life. And then actually, I'm going to say for my ex-husband leaving so I could start on my soul journey. And I mean that both ways, S-O-U-L and S-O-L-E, because if he was still in my life, I don't think I would have been on this journey. Beautiful. I have to say I'm grateful for him leaving. That's gorgeous. And last but not least, what's one desire? To be able to transform lives out there. I want to be able to have a woman look up and say, you know what, if that person 
if Sadna Sabarwal, as a single mom, as a person who is still working full time and doing real estate part time can succeed, so can I. I love it. So shall your desire be or so much better than you can imagine under grace and in perfect ways. So thank you so much for coming and sharing your your wisdom with us, Sadna. Y'all, to connect with Sadna Sabral, you can look her up on Facebook or LinkedIn or go to singlemommillionaire.com. Look up the No Money Down Academy. And to connect with me, go to real estate and or reigoddesses.com. We're also at REI Goddesses on the on the socials. And definitely, if you've enjoyed this, then subscribe and come back next next time for another Real Estate Investor Goddesses podcast. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you. You have just listened to another episode of Real Estate Investor Goddesses, a show dedicated to sharing stories of women creating real wealth through real estate. If you found value on what you just heard, feel free to share with your friends. Visit us at reigoddesses.com to learn more about our programs and live events, as well as to access other resources. Until next time.